Welcome back to Dylan with Sid Meier's Colonization, where we're continuing the colonization of the Americas as the French. Wait to watch the printing press ASAP. So let's send you over to Proxima. Ooh, I got some maps from the Cherokee village that revealed the Aztec cities not far to the west of our scouts. We'll go pay them a visit very shortly. They tend to give you a lot more gold and things like that because they live in proper cities as opposed to villages like the agrarian tribes do. There's also nomads that live in camps, which are the TP icons. I'm all in fountain of youth. Nothing but rumors. Sucks. Could be worse. Could have gotten killed. Hello, Aztecs. They have eight cities. Very nice. The Aztecs do tend to be more warlike than the Inca, which are the other city tribe. Although I wouldn't really call the Aztecs and the Inca tribes. We're going to drop off 20 tools from the caravel, and I'm going to sail east over to Safe Harbor to go pick up some more goods. Safe Harbor is the main place that we dump everything. Let's say hello to the Aztecs, see what's going on with them. They actually have a useful skill, expert farmers, but the issue is they're on the other side of the map, so we are never going to come over here. Let's hope they give us some gold, they give us maps, whatever. I don't have to do. <laughs> Arawaks are messing with Santo Domingo, the second colony to Spanish. Yeah, I really want to reinforce that if you ever play this game, don't don't interact with the Arawaks. They will kill you. Your best bet with the Arawaks is just to not. It's it's to leave. Like whenever you walk into a room and you see a giant ass spider, just leave. Same thing with them. Tobacco actually went up in price. Very interesting. Uh, muskets are up to five. We are not going to be buying muskets. We need to produce those ourselves, 100%. But we're about to get, make a bunch of gold. So 504 gold from the silver. Silver's down to 11. 792 from the coats. Very nice. But now the coats are down in price, unfortunately. It might be low enough that the Indians will pay more. The silver is still worth it to mine as long as it's above about 5 gold per unit. Because at that point it would be equal to, say, furs or sugar. We have 2,219 gold. Let's consider what we'd like to get. We need that Master Blacksmith, so let's pick him up. Although, let's take a look at the immigration. Nothing good. Let's pick up the Master Blacksmith. And then let's pick up, I think, some free colonists. And maybe a Lumberjack at this point. Now, let's pick up a Lumberjack. Can't take all three of these. Let's move the Blacksmith to the front. As well as the Lumberjack. We'll head over to Safe Harbor. I think we're going to pick up a Merchant Man in not too long. You know, instead of a warehouse, I think I'd be better served building a printing press instead. So let's do that. We're gonna need 20 tools, but the printing press is gonna be super important for getting our Liberty Bell production up so that we can sustain more colonists without the inefficient government penalty. And nothing but rumors in that Lost City rumor. We've been getting very unlucky. Usually you get at least one Fountain of Youth per game. Sometimes you can get two to three because their random number generator in this game has some issues. It likes to stay low or stay high for the numbers that it generates, unfortunately. So we're here in the future horror city. There is some Iroquois land there, but it's not a big deal. Some there too. Is, oh, they, oh, they've taken a lot of this land. That's unfortunate. Let's settle anyway. And let's call it, let's call it Ironhold. Hey, they actually gave up that land. Usually in my experience, they only keep hold of land that's directly adjacent to their villages. Sometimes they will keep land that's further away. I think it's based upon what kind of tribe they are exactly. We need to start working towards some docks here, but I think it'd be better to do Liberty Bells instead, temporarily. We're going to need to get food from the ocean, definitely. But I want that next Founding Father. He's taking forever. I don't know what the issue is. Maybe it's glitched. I really hope not. If it's glitched, then I'll have to completely start over. Furs is down to four gold per turn. That kind of hurts a little bit, considering how many furs we produce. Oh, and coats fell too. Mm. Yeah, it'd be good to diversify a little bit, but we do have the bonus of the Native Americans have an interest in our coats, many of them do. And tools rose as well, it's painful, very painful. But we're about to have tool production up and running. Got a printing press in Proxima, fantastic. Look at all those Liberty Bells. We could go with building a lumber mill here, but I'm considering moving our colonists west. But before we do that, we need to remove the forest and plow the field of Ironhold. It seems we found the edge of this land up here, which is unfortunate. We're almost near the edge of the map, which is over here. We're quite close to it. This is a pretty decent map. Sometimes the map generator generates a lot of really wonky setups. I guess we just need a crap ton of Liberty Bells for every Founding Father. I know it's 40% more in Viceroy, but I didn't realize 40% was that much. We're almost there, though. 
We've almost got Brewster. Once we got Brewster, all these petty criminals and indentured servants will finally go away. Hey, hey, Iroquois are actually attacking the English now. They attack Plymouth. Very nice. Silver's down to 10. Muskets are selling for 6 each. So I could maybe get away with selling them to the Iroquois up north and maybe making a profit. Unfortunately, none of them specifically want muskets, but I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, muskets just went up to 6, which is really 7 to buy. Yeah, we're not doing that. Hey, hey, we got Brewster. Very nice. No more friggin' indentured servants or criminals. Very nice. And we got that printing press, which is extra nice. So we are now churning out Liberty Bells. We should be able to get the Founding Fathers a lot faster. Since we're done with the printing press and we have enough revolutionary support, it might be worth it to start working towards a schoolhouse. Alternatively, a church does increase our cross production. Let's go with a church first. It may not be the best of choices since a lot of people think that crosses aren't worth that much in this game. And we won't be able to sustain any students until we have more revolutionary support anyway. I'm going to take the silver to Europe, and I think I'll go ahead and also take the cotton to Europe as well. Yeah, let's do that. We'll leave the tobacco since the Indians might want it, and we'll leave the coats since the natives might want it. I switch between the two because some tribes prefer Indian, some tribes prefer native. And we've got a pioneer that we need to make a pioneer once more. We'll send him off to Ironhold to plow those fields and build a road along the way so that we can be directly connected to them. We're going to bring the blacksmith and the lumberjack over to Safe Harbor and the blacksmith can walk over to Ironhold. We'll have their road network set up pretty fast with the hardy pioneer, so it's not something to worry about too much. Considering the fact that we just explored this area, we're probably going to bring our scouts back from the west depending on how much land is present over here and whether or not this uh, water passage ends or if it goes all the way through. If it doesn't go all the way through, we'll swing south most likely and explore down there as well. Since I doubt that there's more land up here. I said earlier that forest costs two, but wetland forest costs three and rainforest costs three. Something I wasn't quite yet aware of. Hmm, it looks like the waterway does actually end. So there's more land to discover south. So our scouts have something to do and more opportunities for those fountains of youth. We also haven't found a single major treasure unit, interestingly. Alright, so who are we going to go for next? I think we have to go for Jefferson for the plus 50% bell production. 100%. And we got the Lumberjack in position so he can finally start doing his thing. And we no longer need to worry about losing lumber. Here, just in time too. So we're at 19% revolutionary support. So that means if we had one more colonist here, we'd have 5.67 Tories, which might get rounded up to six, or it might be rounded down. I'm not sure which one they choose to do. So we could maybe sustain one more colonist here, maybe not. Let's see what the Aztec capital has to say today. Pretty straightforward stuff. I'd really like to get that fisherman training, but they're so far away, it's just not going to happen. 720 gold though, I'll absolutely take that. Let's drop some silver. Oh, silver's down to nine. Oof. And some cotton. We got 1,562 gold. That's a pretty good amount. It won't be much longer, and then we'll, uh, we'll probably abandon Silverton. At least temporarily. Forgot to change Proxima from a printing press over to something else, so now we're building a lumber mill. The game is old. It doesn't auto-pick something for you, so you keep working on something, but at least you don't lose your hammers. I really need another expert fisherman, so I'm going to pick that up. That leaves us with 562 gold. We could pick up some free colonists. Kind of thinking once we get the church done and safe harbor, we might move the carpenter and the lumberjack over to Ironhold to set up the docks there. But I would definitely prefer to have master carpenters everywhere. I think we'll just go ahead and pick up some more free colonists eventually, but we don't have room for them anyway, so we'll head off of what we got. And we'll probably build a schoolhouse and safe harbor after the church since I don't think they need anything else for the moment. I'm on Fountain of Youth. Nothing but rumors. Eh <laughs> heh, Iroquois doing their thing, hitting the English, very nice. Road's almost done, rum's down to 13, not a big deal. The Iroquois are actually getting a little bit alarmed by the English, right? Yes, thankfully. Not us. They are a little bit alarmed by us, a little bit. But not a lot. We can still get away with not having proper soldiers, especially if we start trading with them soon which I'd actually like to do very soon. 
the village at 4717 does want some tobacco, so I think we're going to take some over there. We should have time. Oh, shit. I think the English might be here to kick our ass. So let's sell some coats, let's sell the furs, let's see if the English are talking to us. I am deeply concerned. So there's some dragoons over here. We need to go around with the wagon train and then hopefully not die. Yeah, we might be in some trouble. Let's see if we can talk to the English, maybe. I'm not even sure how you do that, to be honest. You might need, like, a special founding father. Yeah, there's one dragoon here that could definitely beat us up, but he might be attacking the village. I'm not sure. We have 50 muskets on the hand, so we could, if we need to, rally some troops. I think we should go ahead and do that anyway, so let's give the lumberjack some guns. Oh, and some horses too, very nice. So we can definitely defend ourselves if the English want to attack. I really don't want to get into it with them, but they may have brought it. Whether I like it or not. Yeah, I'm not sure what the music was. I looked at the report, and it still says that they are at peace with us. Yeah, they're at peace, so I hope they don't attack. So Dragoons can move four tiles per turn. So Dragoons have four movement points. They could attack us on the next turn, or they could attack our wagon train on the next turn, which would be unfortunate. So in this game, it's random. So Dragoons have three strength, Soldiers have two strength, Braves and regular colonists have one strength, and then you get bonuses. Like Braves get plus 50% ambush bonus based on terrain. If you're on a mountain, it's like plus 150%. I think hills are like 100%, and it's just completely random. And when you lose, you lose the equipment that you have. And if you don't have any equipment, then you actually die. So it's like, um, if you've got a Dragoon with strength 3 against a colonist strength 1, you've got like a 33% chance of losing or something like that. Ouch. That's more people than I thought there would be. So we built the church. Very nice. Unfortunately, there's no way whatsoever that we could build a stockade in time to not get attacked by the English. So what I'm going to do instead is I think I might work towards a wagon train. No, let's work towards a schoolhouse. I am deeply concerned. We still got this caravel here, right, right, right. I got, I got, uh, sidetracked. I just don't know if we want to get guns at this point. Getting some soldiers wouldn't be a terrible idea. I think we have to at this point in time. So let's grab one more free colonist. Arm him with some muskets. He's going to get on the boat. And then we need to buy a few more muskets as well. We're going to take 50. Muskets rose in price, of course. We should maybe be back in time to prevent them from attacking, say, Proxima, but we could also maneuver quite quickly over to Proxima if we need to. Hopefully these guys are just scouting, though, and they're not going to actually attack us. The AI is not very aggressive in my experience, but I think it can happen. We're here at this village, so we can finally train up to become fur traders, or fur trappers to be exact. Very nice. I wanted this free colonist to become a regular colonist, but I'm going to have to transform them into a soldier most likely. I really did not want to have to do that. And the fisherman goes over to Ironhold. Let's see if we get attacked by the English on this turn. Doesn't look like it necessarily. The Dragoon hasn't moved which makes me uncomfortable. What I really need is actually another wagon train so I'm gonna switch off of the schoolhouse over to a wagon train instead. There we go. Hopefully the ship with the guns comes home soon. They require attack in the English, very nice, I appreciate that. But the English don't seem to be responding, really, as far as I know. Okay, I don't think the English are going to attack, but they're just going to sit outside our city and watch us and wait to see if we become weak. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what they're trying to do. We swapped out the lumberjack with the fur trapper to become a soldier because we need that lumber to keep building. We ran out. Let's send you over to Proxima with the guns and the extra soldier. Nice, 1,000 beads from the Aztecs. Definitely appreciate that. Spanish have actually burned down an Arawak village completely. It's 1564, and it might be about right. Oh, the Arawaks massacred the Spanish colonists at Santo Domingo. I wonder if they completely destroyed the colony or if they just killed some people. And they attacked Isabella, very nice. The Spanish always, they make such terrible decisions. Proxima built a lumber mill, fantastic. Now that we've got a lumber mill in Proxima, what else would we like to do? I think here we might want to focus on training people. We could build another church, but I think we should go with a schoolhouse instead. So we'll start trying to educate people in Proxima, 
and then over in Safe Harbor, where you just focus on like fur trading, that kind of thing. If I was playing on a lower difficulty level, I could do a lot more in a single colony. Alright, we got the guns, let's chop them off. You sir, you grab some guns. Soldier. Unfortunately, the air acquired getting alarmed by the presence of soldiers, but there's not much I can do about that, so let's at least move a few away. That might make them relax. There you go, see? They relaxed a little bit. They were kind of bright green, but then they went down. I don't think the English are here to attack. I think they're just looking around, but I could be wrong. I could be waiting to see if we have any weaknesses and then attacking. We're going to load up the silver and the furs to take back to Europe. We're going to save the coats to trade with the natives and see what kind of price they're going to give us. Come on. Nope, just 300 for the gold. I'll take it. So we have 1,738 gold. Let's actually pick up a Master Carpenter and then another Lumberjack. That leaves us at 38 gold. I don't think we need a Merchantman quite yet. I'm very worried that this soldier might attack Silverton. There's just a basic colonist in there, so they would have about a maybe 66% chance of success in burning down Silverton. Come on, Fountain of Youth. Nothing but rumors. Wonderful. Let's see what the Indians would like to offer us for some tobacco. 271. I think we have like uh, maybe 60 units here. So that's 4.1 gold and slightly more than the European price. Let's try to get a slightly better price. Nope. They can't. Wonderful. Wasted my whole time coming up there because I haggled. Great. And now Iron Hold is properly plowed. We want to switch over to producing those docks. Let's move this soldier over to Silverton to stand against that soldier just standing there looking at us menacingly. Let's go ahead and also build a schoolhouse over here in Safe Harbor. We're up to 34% revolutionary support. As we add colonists, that does drop, but I think we can support quite a few more people here. We do need to get some more food production in order to do so though. I'm going to bring the soldier back to Ironhold. I don't think the English are going to attack us, but you never know. And let's see what the natives would like to offer us for our coats. Let's come in. 237 for like 40 coats. That's like 5.9 for each coat. No way, man. Absolutely not. I was hoping they'd have better prices, but unfortunately they don't. Did get some gold from this Cherokee village though. Gonna drop our load, pick up the silvers down at 8. Wonderful. The lumberjack and the carpenter will head off right now. So those coats are getting shipped off over to Europe instead because the natives don't want to pay almost anything. Oh, what? Oh, oh. That's not good. So, this is a armed native. An armed brave. I can tell by that little line there. And right here it says armed braves. So it looks like the Iroquois have been looting muskets from the English. Which ain't great. That's not great. I mean, it could be as long as they attack just the English and not us. I wish the natives would hurry up and kill the English over here so that I could stand down my soldiers. And have them do something productive. Ooh, mounted braves. Thankfully, the air require is still giving us gifts, so they're reasonably happy with us. Come on, fountain. 320 gold. Alright. The natives have ambush bonuses against European units in force, so they're incentivized to attack these dudes that are just hanging out in the forest, but they're just not doing it. I really don't like the English hanging around. But I literally, I can't tell them to leave. Hey, hey, got Jefferson, so that's plus 50% Liberty Bell production. Fantastic. We definitely needed that to get more founding fathers and more revolutionary support. Here's our chance again. Nothing but rumors. I'm so unlucky this game. It's kind of like gambling. <laughs> we'll drop our coats. Uh, ugh, down at 8 gold. Come on, man. And our tobacco. We're going to need to diversify if we're going to keep trading with Europe. So we are producing a little bit of tobacco and some cotton. We could convert that into cigars and cloth. We've got 1,735 gold. What do we want to get? But first, let's pick which founding father we'd like next. So Peter Minuit lets us get native land for free. Francis Coronado is all existing colonies and the areas around them are revealed. I don't care about that. Paul Revere is the defensive guy. If you get attacked and you have guns on hand but no soldier, a colonist will take up guns. Benjamin Franklin gives you easy peace with Europeans if you want it. Plus you don't get shot into wars that your king starts. And Jean de Brebeuf makes all your missionaries act as if they were experts. I'm going to go with Peter Minuit. We do have some native land that I'd like to acquire. And we built the schoolhouse in Proxima. Very nice. So with that done, I think I want to go with a church next. 
We still don't need a warehouse, and we don't really need a stable. We have enough horses. Let's go over church next. That'll increase our cross production and get us more immigrants. Thanks so much for watching Dylan with it. I'm working on figuring out exactly how to put out my videos. I've realized that I need to put out things that aren't just Let's Plays, even if they are edited Let's Plays, such as tutorials, tips, tricks, walkthroughs, guides, etc. So I think I'll be doing that, and I believe I've also found a more efficient way to edit my videos. So we'll see how that turns out. We might be making them 30 minutes long as a result, and I might be able to put out a lot more. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like would help the video to reach other people that would enjoy this kind of content. If you'd like to see more, you can always subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one in episode 5.